This is Drom Shekasuto. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, good morning. Hope everything is well. Hope you're doing wonderful. There are uh, there are so many ways that um, you know people people in this in this world are so many times they desire to do things for Hashem really like people want to do the best they can people desire good people people wants to to do the right thing we're trying to feed the birds like uh, people in reality trying to do a lot of good and it's always knowing how how to do it and uh, and many times we're putting a lot of effort in certain directions based on things that we heard or that we figure out ourselves that that's going to be the right way but like in reality we see that those uh, ways are not leading us to the desirable um, goal that we set for ourselves. For an example, and I said it many times, many people they hear promises: if you're gonna keep Shabbat, so your life will like you'll you'll have peace in your house, you'll have shalom bayit. If you'll give 10% of your income for charity, miser money, so you'll be rich, like certain promises and like in reality we see that those things doesn't always work, right? Like it's not a secret, but it's not now that we don't believe in the importance or in the greatness of the mitzvot that we need to keep those things and to do them, we do believe. But we see that the result is not coming directly corresponding to the act, to the action. You keep Shabbat and during that Shabbat you can like have a fight with your wife. Like you can be so upset with your kids or whatever and, and, and you're going to lose your mind in Shabbat. So it doesn't mean that you don't need to keep Shabbat. You need to keep Shabbat but you also need to find ways how not to fight and how to, to bring peace. So those are two separate things maybe they are attached in many ways but the result won't come immediately based on the fact that you kept Shabbat that you didn't drove on Shabbat it's much more deeper and, and complex than that and yesterday night a student came to to my house for a, a private session a private meeting and like we talked about few things and and everything that he asked me and everything that he told me like I I answered to him on on the opposite direction like whatever he said I said no and and then he told me he said something that really like I I could relate to I understand I understood and and he said But I'm doing it all for Hashem. Like, how can it be that I'm I'm so wrong? Like, everything that I'm trying to do, even if it's the like it's the opposite. You're guiding me to go in the opposite direction. But like, all of my ideas, all my thoughts came because that, like, I'm trying to do the right thing. Like, I'm trying to pray and I'm trying to think and I'm trying to to humble myself. Like, those are good things that I'm trying to do. So how can it be that it? that it's the opposite from, from what that is right. And I answered because you are basing your way of thinking on your fears and not on your real trust in Hashem, in the Creator. You are trying to do the best thing but because you're afraid because you're scared, not because that you really believe that he's with you, just because that you are scared that he won't be there for you. And 
to base our relationship with the Creator on fears and on anxieties and on pressure, that's a poison path, that's a poisoned path, that's a horrible way of life, that's a horrible way of life. I saw a street sign a few days ago, go to church or the, the devil will get you. And it's not about Christianity, it's not about church, it's, it's about a certain person that hanged that sign, it's about a, a lunatic that, that thinks that the devil will get you if you're not going to follow a certain method. You can find crazy people like that in the Jewish religion and in the Islam and in every kind of culture you can find those radical, violent, crazy, super strict and narrow-minded psychos that don't have no understanding who the Creator is and what's going on in the world. But in the relationship with the Creator and with the faith must be based on love, only based on love. Only the gates of tshuva me'ahava, coming back to Hashem out of love, coming closer to the Creator, based on a real inner desire, is something that, I don't know, I can relate to. I, I don't understand other ways. I don't find no other way sane and normal and, and inviting and, and true. All those methods that are that are forcing us to be so scared and so terrified, like... I remember that I was learning in a certain yeshiva for many years, and in that yeshiva there was a rabbi, he was teaching, and like, we were inspired by his talks, all the time we were inspired, like we, like... Everything he said, we thought it was so godly, and every word meant so much, and whatever, but... With time, you, you start sensing and, and feeling that things are, are, are awkward, like that things are not right, like there are so many manipulations and so many lies and so many things behind the curtains and like you see things, you sense, you feel like things are wrong, things are twisted, like People are lying to you, like people are forcing you, people are like playing with your mind, people trying to 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 brainwash you to certain ideas and to pressure you mentally and emotionally and, and, and financially to hold you down and and where is the freedom of of being that spirit that that you are? We must understand that that's the real importance. In, in our lives that that we will be brave to to fight for ourselves and and to believe in in our inner senses to to believe to our feelings like if you feel that there is a certain place that is pressuring you that there is a community that is crushing you that there are people that are downgrading you that are abusing you that are insulting you that are criticizing you and and blocking your your light, your vision, your ability to be who you are and to express your, your blessing and your happiness and your joy, you must break all those, all those walls and of, of separation and, and, and just like break through and, and run to your own freedom, to your own calm, happy place, to your own, own safe area and, and to come back to your true self and, and, and I don't know. It's very frustrating for me to think that people are suffering and especially people that are desiring the truth and people that are hoping for good things to take place in life and people that are trying to come back to to the Torah and to the mitzvot and to amazing things and and like in any way that possibly they can do good they are doing but People are playing with their minds, people are pulling them and telling them, no, you have to, but you must, but you shouldn't, and this and that, like, it's coming to such crazy places. I said it a few weeks ago, a woman asked me a question, am I allowed to read in the book of the Bala Tanya? Am I allowed to read in the Tanya book? Like, 
what are you crazy what's the what's the question where is it coming from women are not allowed to read books like in which generation we're talking like in which country in like what 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 in the world are you talking about which question is that is a woman allowed to read the balatanya it's not a question it's not a question it's crazy it's a result of years of, of depression. It's a result of years of, 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 of abuse. This is sick. Women are so wise. Women are so gifted, so talented, can, can understand so much. There are groups of women that are sitting and learning and, and praying and doing amazing things together. And like, amazing. If you would know how much wisdom I enjoyed and, and learned from my wife, from her conclusions, from her understandings, it's deep. It's not a joke. You know, the granddaughters of Rashi were, were putting tefillin, they were learning Torah, they received so much wisdom from him. The granddaughters of Rashi Akadosh, 800 years ago and more, they were putting tefillin and they were learning Torah. This is not a secret. It's written. This is a known thing. People don't understand. It doesn't mean now, okay, women need to go and put filin. Oh yeah, now Rav Dror said women need to put filin. No, Rav Dror didn't say women need to put filin. Rav Dror's wife doesn't put filin. She, she never gonna put filin. But women are allowed to grow spiritually and women are supposed to, to learn and to do whatever their heart desire. I mean, they have their freedom to, to, to come closer to Hashem and to be who they are. And not only women, also us, also men, also people, everyone. Like, you have life and you should live them. You have a talent, you've been blessed with something and, and you need to let those talents be expressed. You need to express the, the glory and the beauty of your, of your free spirit. And you should allow the amazing light of your soul shine to the world. And, and therefore, you are who you are. You create or made you to be who you are for, 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 for that cause. That, that you're going to share the talents and the treasures that have been treasured inside of you with the world, with your surroundings. In your language, to the people that are around you, to the people that are close to you, to those ones that relate to you and to your ideas and... And that's the beauty. And that is the real beauty of, of, of finding the path that the Creator wants you to find. And religions, all religions, are, are a bit crazy because people are wackos. People are sick in their minds and they're twisting everything, every good thing they're twisting. Like, like they twisted every good thing on earth. They destroyed every good portion of, of godliness they, they, they destroyed. We have destroyed in different generations. And we need to take responsibility and to, and to refresh the world and to bring new spirit to the world. And to let honest people have they, their say and speak their words and express their thoughts and if you find yourself as an honest person you must talk if you feel that you have something to say you must go ahead and and do it and share the world and share the your wisdom with the world we must do that and that's our obligation Hashem will bless us we must continue and we must go ahead and to share and to share and to share and to do as much as we can in this lifetime. There are so many people that need us just to be their friends, just to be supportive. And when we don't believe in ourselves, when we keep on doubting ourselves all the time, oh, who am I? I'm not Jewish, I'm not Israeli, I haven't converted yet, I haven't completed my tshuva, I'm not keeping Shabbat, I'm not eating kosher, who am I to talk, who am I to this, who am I to that? Those are the negative thoughts of the evil inclination that is interrupting you while you try to do your thing in the world, trying to destroy your self-esteem. And you just need to kick it away 
and to throw it away and to redeem your soul from the hands of your low self-esteem and the darkness that is surrounding you and to remind yourself of the beauty and the, and the, and the glory of your shining soul that you're honest, that you have dignity, that you are modest in so many ways and nice and that you're a kind person and that you want to do good and that your name is Angel uh, Gonzalez and that we love you and all the friends that are with us, we love you guys and you're amazing people and we care about you. And you're angels and you're all angels. We are all angels. We're a group of holy people. Holy people. The Likutem Oran Rabbi Nachman of Breslev is saying that a person is higher than an angel and even if he is wrapped and surrounding surrounded by lust and desires of this world, he is an holy angel that is that is divine and cannot be trapped in this world forever. His soul is a flaming fire and he's rising to the heights and nothing in this world can really stop him except of if he will give up. If you give up, no one can help you. If you surrender to the darkness, no one can save you. No one can save you. If you gave up, if you let the evil inclination, the sadness, the depression take over you, <laughs> what can, how, how can I help you? I'm going to lift you. you. If you're not going to hold yourself, you're going to fall back again down to the ground and lower. How can someone help you if you gave up on yourself? But if you will never give up, if you will never back off, no one in the world can break you. No one can stop you. Not in this world and not in the world to come. I hope you understand what I'm saying and I hope you're going to take this lesson far, as far as possibly can, to prayers, to work, to relationships, to conversations, to distribution, to, to do whatever, to meditation, to write novels, to illustrate children books, to make music, to go talk to people, to create conferences, to, to organize events, to do whatever you want in the world, to clean the streets, to, to, to wear a nice shirt, to do whatever you need to do in life for that cause that the light of your soul will shine. The godly light that has been given to you to spread and to share and to illuminate the world with it. That's your soul and it's shining. And when you're going to understand your true potential, only when you're going to start using the things that are already available for you. Then you're going to learn how much more you're able and capable of doing. Only then you're going to understand the real talents that are hidden inside of you. Me, for an example, and it's a small example, I'm saving lives when I'm asleep. I'm going to sleep and snore in the middle of the night and I'm saving lives. How? While I'm snoring in the middle of the night, I'm saving lives of people. Tell me how. Because my videos, thousands of videos, are playing in YouTube and in Facebook and in Instagram and in SoundCloud and in all social, social media outlets and on WhatsApp. And I'm asleep and people are watching those videos and it's me saving their lives while I'm asleep. I'm asleep. I'm going to sleep. I'm snoring in the middle of the night. No one can wake me up and I'm saving lives of people. How? Because Hashem saw the inner desire of my soul, the passion of mine to save lives of people, that I care so much about my students and that I want to help and I want to do good. So He helps me to do that and He provides the tools and the power to to reach out to thousands of people even when I'm asleep. Yeah. And you can do the same in your way using your talents and your abilities. And the problem is that you just still don't believe in yourselves enough. But when you will, you'll see results. And when you see the first results, they will give you the inspiration to keep on putting your effort into that direction and then you'll understand how much more you can and, and you can succeed okay we're in it to win it thank you be well please well. subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world for more please visit amuna.com